In this video, let's talk about variance swaps. Let's begin with a quick definition. Variance swaps, these are essentially forwards on the realized variance of your chosen asset measured over a pre-specified period. Realized variance, please note, is the square of the realized volatility. And in this definition, we are referring to variance swaps to be essentially forwards. The reason being that unlike swaps, the way we know and understand swaps, variance swaps do not have multiple settlements. They have a single settlement, much like a forward contract. Okay? Variance swaps, they essentially involve an exchange of realized variance with a fixed or strike variance. Okay? From the perspective of that party which has bought a variance swap, that party which has taken a long position in a variance swap, the payoff would look something like this. It will simply be equal to the contract notional, also called the number of variance units, that times the difference between realized variance and strike variance. Okay? Remember this, that both of these inputs these are annualized numbers. Okay? Also, this payoff is a convex function of the realized volatility. This means, if I were to plot this payoff with respect to realized volatility, the plot would come out to be something like this. Okay? It will have a distinct curvature to it. This means that if realized volatility were to indeed go up, the gains coming to the buyer of this variance swap will be boosted. If realized volatility were to go down, the losses to the variance buyer will be discounted. Okay? This feature of the variance swap, the fact that its payoff is a convex function of realized volatility, is attractive to the buyer of a variance swap. Okay? Now, in practice, variance swaps, they find usage when it comes to hedging an existing exposure to volatility or for that matter, speculating on volatility. Now, we know this, that hedging and speculation on volatility can also be done using simple vanilla options. I mean, simple calls and puts. But remember this, that simple vanilla options, their value not only depends on volatility, it also depends on the level of the underlying asset. And therefore, simple vanilla options, it can be said that they mix volatility risk exposure with what is called directional risk exposure with respect to the underlying asset. Okay? In comparison, variance swaps, they offer a pure volatility exposure, an exposure which is not contaminated by the directional movements in the underlying asset. Okay? Now, this was about a quick look at what exactly is a variance swap and what kind of payoff it offers to the buyer of the variance swap. Okay? Now, to understand variance swaps in a lot more detail, let's take a look at how Variance swaps can be used in practice. For this purpose, let me assume that I am, let's say, the manager of a very broad-based equities portfolio. Okay? I am concerned, let's say, about a hypothetical scenario wherein there will be a huge market sell-off and my equities portfolio will result in a highly negative return. Okay? And I want to hedge against this hypothetical scenario. Now, for this purpose, I very quickly recall this, that there is this empirical, or let's say, an observed negative correlation between equity returns and volatility. So, if as per this hypothetical scenario, my equity return indeed turns out to be a highly negative number, as per this scenario, volatility should also spike upwards. Okay? And if I can enter into a trade which gives me a gain, a profit, because of volatility spiking upwards, then that trade 
will act as a hedge. Okay, let's say for this purpose, I choose to work with a variance swap. And let's say I were to contact another financial institution, let's say a big bank with a very prominent equities derivatives desk, or for that matter, let's say a hedge fund. Okay, I ask the salesperson working at this financial institution to help me structure a variance swap, which fits the needs which I have. Okay, in this variance swap, first things first, I'll be taking the position of that party which will be receiving realized variance and paying out strike or fixed variance. The reason being that if volatility indeed spikes upwards, I want to make a gain because I am receiving realized and paying fixed. Okay, now let's do this. Let's very quickly take a look at how the term sheet of this variance swap will look like and how various entries in this term sheet will be arrived at. Okay, first things first, I'll be the variance buyer. I am party A and this guy, party B, will be the variance seller. Then, since my equities portfolio was a very broad-based equities portfolio, let's say I have chosen to work with the underlying as being S&P 500, the underlying for my variance swap, okay? Then let's say my hedging horizon is around six months and therefore I fix my settlement date to be six months from today. It's over this upcoming six months period that my realized variance will be calculated, okay? What will the formula be for calculating realized variance? It'll look something like this. Firstly, I will identify all the trading or let's say business days that fall in this six months period. Let's say the number of trading days is these many, capital N. For each of these days, I will, as we move along, keep observing the closing levels of S&P 500. Okay. And then once I have my capital N, these many closing levels of S&P 500, I will convert each of these closing levels, these prices, to daily returns. N prices means N minus 1 daily returns. Okay, here the daily return is being calculated as a log return. Log of the closing level of S&P 500 on any given day, that divided by the closing level, let's say, on the previous day. Okay, once I have my N minus 1 daily returns, I basically square each one of them and I calculate their simple average. This will give me an estimate of the daily realized variance over this pre-specified period of six months. Okay, remember the realized variance which enters into this payoff formula is basically an annualized realized variance and therefore this number has to be scaled by the number of trading days in one year and let that be 252. Okay, this is how I'll be calculating the realized variance once I land up on my settlement date, which is six months from today. Okay, now the next step, the next entry in this term sheet is what we call strike wall. Okay, this was my strike variance. Square root of this strike variance is strike wall. Okay, come over to this guy, party B. Let's say party B takes up this role of calculating the strike wall. This step is called pricing this variance swap. How is this number calculated? Now, at the inception of this variance swap, we want this variance swap to be fair to both parties and there will be no exchange that happens between these two parties at the initiation of this variance swap. Now, to make the value of this swap equal to zero for both parties, thereby making it a fair trade, we have to do this, that we have to set the strike variance to be equal to the expected realized variance over the upcoming six months period. For this purpose, what this party B does is that it creates what is referred to as the static replication portfolio for this variance swap.
And this static replication portfolio, which includes, let's say, a forward contract on the chosen underlying and quite a few calls and puts, I mean, vanilla options on the chosen underlying. Okay, and from this static portfolio, this replicating portfolio, this guy calculates the expected realized variance for the upcoming six months period. Okay, and that expected realized variance is set to be equal to the strike variance. And let's say those calculations result in a strike variance of 0 0.04, which means that the strike volatility is 0.2 which means that in percentage points, the strike volatility is 20. Okay, next, come over to party A. Party B asks party A, what is the size of the trade that you are looking at? Okay, let's say party A has done its calculations and it's looking for basically this much of profit, a profit of 50,000, if the realized volatility ends up, let's say, one percentage point above the strike volatility. Okay, so this number is referred to as the Vega notional. Okay, so the party A, it says that I'm looking for a Vega notional of 50,000 because I'm expecting a profit of $50,000 if indeed realized volatility lands up one percentage point above the, the strike volatility. Okay. Now, what enters into the payoff of this variance swap, which we are trying to create here, is not the Vega notional. What enters into this payoff is the variance notional, also called the contract notional, also called the number of variance unit, units. This number can be approximately calculated given the Vega notional and the strike volatility using this formula. If I were to use these numbers, 50,000 divided by 2 times 20, I get my variance notional to be 1250. If now you were to indeed use these inputs into this formula, variance notional 1250, sigma r 21, remember 1 percentage point above strike wall, and sigma k to be 20, you can convince yourself that approximately speaking, the gain, the payoff, which comes from the variance swap, will be very close to the Vega notional of 50,000. Okay, this video was all about understanding what exactly is a variance swap and how we can use variance swaps in practice.